Good evening, Noreen McClendon again here with Free to Heal, where we come together weekly to heal the ravages of incarceration, whether you're a formerly incarcerated loved one, child of a formerly incarcerated person, or uh, the incarcerated person yourself. We're trying to heal those ravages. And tonight we had another great session. Uh, Here are some session spotlights that I, I hope you pay attention to. So everybody, welcome to Free to Heal. This is where we come together every week and where our goal here is to heal the ravages of incarceration, whether you are a person who has been incarcerated, whether you are a loved one, whether you're a child of someone who's been incarcerated, um, or and we even had um, a corrections officer once to come and talk about her experience being a corrections officer. So um, our goal here is to, this is the 100 zone. We don't, we don't, we ain't telling no stories. We're not um, lying one to another and we will call you out on your stuff. Okay. Because the most important thing we can do is to be honest with ourselves about who we are and what's going on. And Hey, come on. No, that's you. No, Mr. Terrell. Hey, sure the <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I wanted him to check in before we got started. Because um, we're going to also um, talk about his, um, we're going to actually do some stuff from a, a topic from his book tonight. Oh, we are? Yes, we yeah, are. We are. That's what I'm saying. In. That's what I'm saying. So you can go ahead and Sit check in cube. while you're here. Come on, check in. Talk to the people. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. How y'all doing tonight? And glad to see you guys again for the fellas that got y'all books, man. I thank y'all for being there. And- Appreciate y'all accepting the book with uh, warm arms, and hopefully you guys can read something to get some out of it. And yeah, uh, thanks a lot me. for the book. No problem, man. Thank you guys for receiving it. We're open the warm arms, and hopefully you guys learn some things from it. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm Terrell Tillman uh, from South Central Los Angeles. I did like 19 years in the feds, did juvenile time, been out three years myself, three and some change. I authored this book right there, Formula for Success. It's pushing the line. Most everybody on this call got one by now. And I'm just out here uh, pushing the line, man, helping the people. I'm the reentry manager at Lakata. So I'm, I'm active in the community. And what's Lakata? Lakata is Los Angeles Center for Alcohol and Drug Abuse. And uh, they've been around for a while. So I'm going to bring a different component, that reentry component to them that they've uh, been needing there. So... Um, like I said, I'm just in, involved in the community trying to make sure people have uh, their resources and things they need to come home and make that healthy uh, transition back into society. And I just want you to know ahead of time that Mr. Rufus said that um, he don't know if we're going to be able to, you know, come back like we did last week because last week we showed out. So, you know what I'm saying? So we got to come with it this week because Mr. Roof is over here said, I don't know if y'all can do that again. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm really glad you're here because, you know what I'm saying? We need some, some reinforcements from Mr. Roof is over here. You know, he don't know. I like a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Don't play with me. I Tell him I ain't scared. Tell him. He ain't scared. Okay. Thank you. There you go. We ain't scared. We ain't never been scared. We ain't been scared. But listen, this is what I, this is, um. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. That's, that's exactly what I needed him to say, just in case y'all missed it, okay? In his Bernie Mac voice, okay? So one of the things, um, progressions and setbacks is the topic that I picked from Mr. Terrell's book. And, um, and I think it's really a good topic tonight, especially because we have so many people that are actually, we got a large number of people. This is their first time in a group. And, um, and one of the things that is kind of typical is progressions and setbacks. When you're doing this re-entry process, um, things may go well. In fact, one of the ladies that I met, I met a guy while I was being a, a rap groupie this weekend. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was a rap groupie for the for the night. Um, and he had done 27 classic. years. She was the I was she the... wasn't a big, she wasn't a rap groupie. She was at the classic, too short and banks. You know what I'm saying? She was classic. <laughs> MC, yeah. MC8, MC8. Yeah. Lord Banks, Lord Banks. So when, um, but the, the late, there was a lady named Stacy who actually has 
been on of all the MC8 stuff. And and so she was there. She, Her guy had just come home. He had done 27. And she was like, he came home in October. He had a job by the next, by the next Monday or so. And he, um, you know, he got a car. He did this. He did that. And I said, this is what I want, want you to understand. The fact that there's always going to be a residue from being incarcerated, whether it's a short period of time and specifically if it's been a long period of time. Think you may come out and things may go well for a while, but there's going to be at least some emotional residue. There will be some habits, things that uh, other people may not understand, but those things are real. And I hope that you will pay attention to those and check in on uh, the advice that uh, we get from those people who have been through it. The thing that I love about this group is that people are not talking about what they heard. They're talking about what they've lived. And this is wonderful advice on the residue. It can be emotional. It can, it can be physical. And there are things that affect all members of the family and uh, the entire community. So I hope you'll pay attention to that. When the weird stuff start happening, keep my number and holler at me. Because even if it's just emotionally, there are going to be, you cannot be gone 27 years and nothing, and you don't have no residue. Oh, you just come out, everything is fine, and you all good. No, 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 no. It may, get right, right, say that again, okay? You can pretend everything's fine, but it's not. It's not. It's, it's, it's the I inner. Would, I wouldn't got me a... Um, when I got out, I, I got in this program where I had a counselor because I was scared to talk to the people directly around me. I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel comfortable or nothing like that. So I went and got me a counselor to help me with my management skills as far as on the street. No drugs, nothing like that. It's just twice a week. She calls me and we go through the therapy. But I needed that because a lot of anxieties that I didn't recognize was on my back. And you start like 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 Noreen said, you're gonna seem weird to the people around you, your family, your friends, even the woman you're sleeping next to. I slept on the couch before I slept in the bed because I, I rolled over and almost choked her out. Because I'm not used to 26 and a half years in prison. I wasn't used to nobody in my bed. She rode over and touched me in the middle of the night, and I wasn't expecting it. And I I pounced on her, so I slept on the couch for a while to give myself time enough to get used to being home. Y'all have to transition home now. You know, you have to find out what you like, who you are, that you're not... Me, J58030, I'm not him no more. I'm not that dude that's got to walk this way on the track. Now I can take my shoes off and rub my feet through the grass. But the simplest things in the world don't seem like the most trivial things. You know what I'm saying? So I tell everybody that just came home, you people that just came home, you three, find out who you are before you run to the family because you're gonna need that self time to get yourself in, in, uh, to get yourself in, reintroduced back into society because you are introducing yourself to your house, to society, to this new program. You introduce yourself to the unknown. We thought we knew everything, but we don't because all the stuff that they give you in the prison is not accurate. It's not. So you have to reintroduce yourself back to society in a way that's slow enough for your mind to comprehend without locking up because you are lock up. And what's and OK. And also, re, and I, I see your hand. I'll come right to you. Also, reintroduce yourself to yourself because you need to find out who you're going to be on this side of the wall. OK. And with respect to um, I mentioned when I went there uh, to Solano about people even sleeping in the same bed, there was a guy he said he told his wife, he said, when I get out, he said, no matter what happens, he said, if we've been in the bed 
being intimate or just watching TV or whatever. He said, do not touch me in my sleep. And he went on, he said, but I'm trying to, he said, and she didn't understand. And I said, he said, I told her, do not touch me. And then he starts explaining why he didn't want her to touch him because when he was in YA, it was a bad experience. Somebody was standing over him and 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 that required him to have to get down because they wasn't coming at him the right way. And so all of these years, he's been down more than 20 some years. And anybody, he said, he put it this way. He said, anytime anybody is close to me over my bed or touching me, it's a problem when I'm asleep. He said, that's a problem. Right, huh? Traumatization. Yeah. And so he's saying, and I and he was like, So I don't know how to get her to understand it. I said, Let me tell you something. I said, You just did it. You explained it to me. Explain it to her the exact same way that you explained it to us in this room right here. The key is going to be to communicate what it is that you're feeling. Uh, a lot of times though, you're gonna feel anxiety and you may not even know why you're feeling it. And this is where you're going to need the support of people around you. But it's very important. I, I told them and shared with them, and I may have shared with you guys before about the young lady that um, one of my first semesters at CIW, and she came home, she called me at my office and she goes, Miss Noreen, I'm really struggling because my dude, you know, he takes good care of me. He likes to snuggle up under me and stuff. And it drives me crazy. She said, I don't like it. She said, I've been sleeping by myself for over two years. She wasn't even down that long. OK, for two years. But now it was problematic for her and it was an adjustment for her to want him to be up underneath of her. And I was telling her, I said, hey, babe, I said, let me just tell you this, little mama. The issue is you is not him. Men snuggle up under their women. <laughs> That's normal. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have to feel the adjustment if you want to keep that man and you say he's taking good care of you and you know he doesn't mean you any harm. You're going to have to make the adjustment, but you need to have that conversation with him. He needs to understand what it is. And so that's the most important thing. And ma'am, you wanted to say something. Um, when you said about the residue, so you can look like it and you can't look like it. Can you guys hear her? Yeah. Somebody shake your head yes or no? No. Okay, so you're going to have to come closer and talk louder. I said that the residue part. So I got a job when I first came home, but I had that thing in prison. Make sure they can see her from the bed. Um, that they would uh, say to me, you don't look like you belong here and stuff. So even when I came out, I had a friend that hired me and he used to introduce me and say, can I tell him, can I tell him? And I said, I've been 17 and a half years. He said, man, she ain't got no residue, but he don't know the residue is inside. It's, in the it's inside. Yeah. And I still have the residue and next month I will have been home 10 years. Right. So. And you got no supply glasses. Let's just say that for the record. Okay. Okay. We just, we just, we call it like we sees it. Okay. That's flies, glasses. And that's the thing. Even if it's not going to be physical changes, it's going to be, or physical adjustments, the emotional adjustments are real and they cannot be minimized. You can't act like it don't matter. Go ahead, Ben. And the thing about, well, basically what we're saying is, is normalization. It's, it's normal stuff that when you come home, it's different from the pen. I'm 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 basically I'm basically the same way right now. I've been home three and a half years. I'm the same way in my bed. I got a big ass king side bed, but it's like you stay over there, and I'm gonna stay over here. Give me my space, and then when I sleep by myself, I'm all over the bed. It ain't the rotisserie turn no more, because in prison it's the rotisserie turn. You can't you can't turn the covers. You just gotta. It's like you on a rotisserie because that bed is so little. But we're basically talking about the normalcy of being home and the different adjustments that you have to make psychologically and mentally and emotionally and physically as well, especially when you're dealing with your spouse and somebody that understand communication skills and being open and verbally uh, articulating this to, your, to, the, to whoever you're around is very important because they don't know. They don't think you're weird or they think they might think you're tripping, but just explain to them, you know, talking in plain fashion, look, I'm not used to that, babe. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to that. Give me some time. Let me make the proper adjustments because I've been traumatized. I've been in prison. I haven't been in an intimate relationship with nobody. So this is all new. It might not be new to you and it might seem simple to you, but even though it is a simple task, it might be harder for me because I haven't been doing that. I've been built to a certain way and that's what it is. So I have to build up my uh, skill sets and, and, and 
and, and ability to change and grow into that. And it's going to take time. It ain't going to happen overnight. The adjustments between prison, a halfway house, and from there to going home to your family. If you have a family to to go to, one gentleman had suggested to us some time ago that he uh, advocates for people to go to a halfway house at least for a while initially before they go straight home to their families. And the reason for this is that there are so many things that you're going to go through, changes, that you might be able to go through those changes yourself and make you more prepared and cause less damage to yourself in the relationship that you have with your family if, in fact, you get to uh, spend that time in the halfway house getting to know yourself again, getting to know who you are on this side of the wall because it is not the same. I say it all the time. Who went into prison is not who's coming out, and who was in the prison can never be who they are on the outside of the walls because that universe only exists behind the wall. It has its own hierarchy, politics, language, communications. All of those things are unique. It's similar to the military. So you cannot be who you were in prison because that universe and that language and so on doesn't apply. So uh, it was great information about uh, and a great suggestion to go to a halfway house for a minute um, before you go home to your family, but recognizing that there's also going to be another adjustment once you leave the halfway house and go to your family. So I hope you enjoy that dis part of the discussion as well. And one of the things too, he, um, that, uh, we had a guy was coming before and he was saying that he really recommends, and I want, this is for, um, Armando. It actually is good that you are spending time in a halfway house before just going right home to your wife and your family, because this gives you an opportunity to adjust to society initially without, and then some of those things you'll be able to overcome before you actually go home. But know this, once you go home, then that's another whole set of adjustments, yeah. right? Because now, you, now you're dealing with what's going on in that household. And I want to share with you too, because you do have a wife, um, and I've shared this with the group before. So those of you guys that have heard this before, please bear with me. But I really think is relevant to try to help him because he has a wife. And that is your wife has been dealing alone and surviving and handling everything. And it is it is going it may seem like she's trying to run everything, but the control is not what she's after. She doesn't even know a lot that she has. It's like. I get help. I have help. I don't even know how to use help because I haven't had help for 30 years or how long you've been married. I haven't had any help. So now I actually have some help. I have to even re think to, to ask, oh, that's right. I don't have to do that by myself. Oh, this is another thing. Um, oh, I need to consider Armando when I get ready to go somewhere. So I wasn't, in, this wasn't a situation about incarceration. I just hadn't had a, a boyfriend for years and I wound up living with somebody and I would after work, whatever I'm doing, I stay at work for a long time or whatever and never even call him and say anything. He said, babe, he said, I'm worried about you. He said, and, I, and it occurred to me, damn, like I'm not used to having to report my movement to anybody <laughs> because once I knew where I was, my whole family knew where I was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, you know, but it wasn't that I didn't want to, it just never even occurred to me. So be patient with her. Another thing that I shared with them at Solano is this, is that there is a fear. And you know what I think? Um, I got this from you, Miss Tony, um, about the fear of them going away again of you being being taken away again. There is a lot of behavior um, that, you know, your loved ones, they'll be checking on you, want to know where you at, what you're doing, what's your movements. And it's not about control. It's about one day they woke up and you were not there. The, 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 when they went to bed that night, you didn't come back and you didn't come back for decades. And, that, go, and that, goes for your whole, that goes for your whole family, your yeah. children, your mother, everybody in your family, they all have that thought process of you going back to jail. So it ain't nothing that they trying to control you. It's just, you disappeared before, and I did it twice. I did it twice with my kids and my mother. So 
you know, my daughter, she was like, oh, shit, I don't know if you're going to be here again. I said, well, I'm here to stay, but that's something that we can't even think about. We don't even know, but that's what they feel. Because you don't feel the fear as a person, as the person, because, and I also like to explain that nobody got up in the morning and said, I'm getting ready to take this, I'm getting ready to go out here and do this crime so that I can ruin the lives of my, my family, my kids, you know, my loved ones, and I want to be gone for them for the next 20 years. Another spotlight for tonight was the discussion about how family members have a fear that you will go back to prison. Nobody decided in the morning that they were going to leave home and not come back for years on end. But it's what happened. And so oftentimes family members, loved ones don't even consciously know that they're afraid you're not going to come back, but they are. And so it will cause them to do things like constantly be checking on you, calling you. Where are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? Well, tonight it was interesting because it came out in our discussion that the former inmate also has a fear of returning to prison that is often not talked about. So just think about that. People are walking around with these fears of what may happen or not happen with a loved one and we're not talking about it. And what is that doing subconsciously to the communication between the formerly incarcerated, their loved ones, and those members of the community? So I hope you pay close attention to that discussion. Uh, then we had a, a great discussion about progressions and setbacks that was led by Mr. Terrell Tillman, who was our guest. He wrote the book, Formula for Success, uh, Reentry 030. And he talked to us about the fact that you're going to have progressions and you're going to have setbacks. No matter how you cut it, it is part of what happens when you come home and it's part of the reentry process. It's normal and what you should do when that happens. Nobody did that, but it happened. Yeah, Noreen, one thing we also have to say is we, as the people coming back, have that internal fear ourselves oh. that due to administration, due to the laws changing, due to having someone like Pete Wilson in there saying, well, I'm going to recall people. I watched the first 10 years I was down, people get brought back into prison because they said, oh, you had an incorrect parole date. Oh, you didn't serve enough time. I actually sort of got violated two years ago and had to go back and serve my determinate sentence on my commitment offense that they said they didn't compute properly. They wanted to violate me, but the judge said there's no violation. So what they said is, well, you have to go back and serve your determinate sentence on your crime. Because when I came in, you were supposed to serve that when you got your parole date. When I came in, you did your determinate sentence first and then started on your life term. Well, they switched it just because they needed to put another 100 people back in prison. Exactly. That's what, it, that's what we're afraid of internally, that due to no fault of our own, especially when we're doing good, of, of going back. And I'm so glad you mentioned that, too, because um, and I'm going to come right back to you, Tony. But um, a lady that um, was in CIW, she had been down 20 some odd years and she had a date. She was scheduled to go, gave away all of her stuff, only to find out for them to get and say, oh, well, no, we miscalculated. We miscalculated your time and you got to do another 14 months. OK. And so I, I, it makes sense. And as a matter of fact, I was able to see her in Oakland um, this weekend, too. She's been out a couple of years and she's doing really well. She treated me to the best seafood lunch. I mean, it was bomb. You know what I'm saying? So it was good to see her. And I forgot to mention that as a part of my good weekend. But I wanted you to go ahead and say what you were going to say um, about the fear. Um, it's that, you know, it is. Um, I say this a lot, but it's an individual sport. And so um, you have, as the gentleman stated, you have your own set of pre predispositions <laughs> as a person that's coming out. Your child has 
you know, on the other end, your child, your spouse, like the gentleman said, your family, everybody has their own perspective and communication is so important because, you know, I, I went to sleep um, and everything was hunky dory and I'm 11 years old and I woke up with the police knocking the door down and taking my mother to jail. And I was in a foreign land, you know, I was in another state, I was, you know, pushed around. So the fears that we're all carrying, we have to learn to communicate. I'm 56 and some of this, I'm just communicating to my mother within the last decade. We're just communicating it to one another. And I think had my mother not written her book, I don't know if we would have ever got the opportunity to communicate to that to one another. So what I'm just summing up here is if you have those fears, it's okay. And you need to communicate that information to your family. And, and it might even spark that conversation that was sparked between me and my mother of having that opportunity to begin to tell each other about things that you've never had the perspective on. Yeah. And it's really important. You know, it's one of the things... Um, and I think, sure, you have talked about this several times about how people don't want to discuss a lot of the things that happen. Some people don't yes. want you to talk about it. Some people like you wanted to talk about what had happened. And you she asked her family um, in the car, don't y'all y'all want to know what happened, you know, while I was in prison or whatever, because they weren't asking. Come on, come, come. And yeah, because I need to let, let you exactly what I said to them. I said, don't you guys want to know what happened to me? I said, my girlfriend broke my ribs while I was in prison. They didn't ask me nothing. Mm -hmm. They didn't say nothing. But that's the reality of life in there mm -hmm. for most of us mm -hmm. and stuff. So people are like, they like, I, I was in class at Southwest and the guy, that was his big thing. When they found out I had been in prison, he said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, you have a girlfriend? I said, uh -huh. He said, see, you real, you real, you telling the, but that's what they want to hear. Uh -huh. But what you, the, the thing is that a lot of people go in there and a lot of people, you get those young girls who come who are really pretty girls and ain't no man saying, hey, baby, you so fine no more. So the first girl who says something like you look good or something, they, that's, yeah, because oh, wow. they like that. They want, they still want that attention. Wow. Yeah. Well, so it, they morph. And, and now for me, the question with that, Cheryl, would be, does that make, does that, do they get preyed upon because of that need? Is that, is that something? No. Okay. They just, they just feel that, that need. Okay. Got you. Okay. Cause I could see that being, making them pray. I mean, just with my experience being an instructor and seeing some of what was going on in CIW, I could see that making somebody a prey, but that's good in the feds that, that it didn't happen. I still want to go back to. Um, and I'd like to give you the floor to talk a little bit about the progressions and setbacks, okay? I want to say something before we get into that. It's crazy that you said that about uh, people don't understand what we've been through in prison and people don't give a damn, honestly. They just think that you're home and now you're home. And it was crazy because I was talking to my, my oldest daughter yesterday. She was telling me about a situation that had happened to her that I was oblivious to. I mean... All the time I've been in prison, those 19 years, it was things in her life that she never shared with me and I never knew because I was in prison. And when she told me the shit yesterday that had happened to her, it was like, whoa. And I said, I was in jail. She was like, yep. And it was like, damn, I missed on a lot. Our people have been traumatized and been through some shit since we've been in jail. And we don't have a clue about it and vice versa. You know what I mean? And we've been through some stuff and they don't have a clue about it. So there's a lot of missing information and links to oh, what's yes. been going on in each other's lives. So you don't know what type of trauma your loved one's been in and been through while you've been in jail. Either they wasn't talking to you because they couldn't talk to you or they just didn't want to tell you because they didn't want to upset you or, or how you worried or you just wasn't in communication with them. You know what I mean? And this shit happens. So wait, but before you, so on that point, because I, I need to say this is that um, for us, when we when we do get to talk to you while you're incarcerated, the last thing we want to do is spend that 15 minute call on 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 burdening you with whatever. We know you right. can't do nothing yeah. about it. We know you can't change nothing. We know you don't need nothing else to worry about. We know you doing the best you can to survive in there. So we trying to, you you know, give you the best of us in that 15 minutes. And of course, 
Of course, and we can feel you too. Right. So you guys can feel it and we can feel it. But again, we're still trying and keep in mind this I just had a flashback. I just had a flashback of um of the of the fucking recording. Uh this call is being recorded. Motherfucker, I know it's being recorded. You done told me that 10 times. Every time you do that, you stepping on my, my 15 exactly. minutes. Shut up. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But we just try, we try to have a conversation. You interrupt me with that bullshit. We already know it's being recorded. You know what I'm saying? And so it's it's irritating. But again, that's interesting because it is something that we do. I know I can definitely speak for me. If it was something that wasn't absolutely necessary, that was bad, I just didn't share it because I only got 15 minutes of a call, you know, unless he got a cell phone. And even that, you know, it, it, that's limited because, you know, somebody might be coming. He might have to hang up in my face. You see what I'm saying? So it just it's a, it's a lot of things that goes on. But what happens is. And I think I'm thinking about your daughter in particular, particularly I'm thinking about being a daughter and how we process well, my dad should have been here to protect me, right? And you not, and how that can build resentment. And I remember you saying how your daughters was hard and a pain on you. I was you, dead. Man. You said I'm saying I was dead. Yeah. Good. Your family ain't shit. I had to take it on the chin, you know what I mean? Because they were they were speaking facts, you know? and it, and it wasn't something that, again that you intended to do. You didn't wake up in the morning and say, "I'm gonna go do this so I can ruin your lives and subject yeah. you to all kinds of trauma and shit." Like that's not that never happened. But the reality is, is that was exactly that was still the result of the choices that you made, whatever day you made those choices. So it's important for everybody to understand that um, the communication. Um, one of the first things that um, that they wanted to talk to me about in Solano from my book was the the uh, issue of erectile dysfunction. And, and it was like, and I, I was explaining to them, listen, listen, you got to talk to your woman about it. You got to talk to her about it. And this is the reason I bring it up now is to say this, is that as women, when we don't know what's going on and why you're acting strange we internalize that we assume it's something that we're doing or something we're not doing it makes us um and then if you're not saying anything and you're avoiding sex with us we're assuming that you're having sex with somebody else so all of these things get internalized and it creates these um these holes in the relationship these uh bridges that get cracked and things where if it's just a matter of communication then the likelihood is that the trauma is not being compounded so we already lost you for however long we lost you for now you come home you traumatize we traumatize we're not talking about it and we all trying to act like this shit's everything's okay and it's not it's clearly not okay because everybody got something going on and we all dealing with our internal struggle struggles and fears about the situation. And thank you for giving me just a second to go back to that. Um, but go ahead. Now I wanted to give you the floor about, about the progressions and um, setbacks. Then we had a, a great discussion about progressions and setbacks that was, led by Mr. Terrell Tillman, who was our guest. He wrote the book, Formula for Success, uh, Reentry 030. And he talked to us about the fact that you're going to have progressions and you're going to have setbacks. No matter how you cut it, it is part of what happens when you come home and it's part of the reentry process. It's normal and what you should do when that happens. No, no, I, oh. I, that ain't for you. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm <laughs> no, I just wanted, I was moving it so I could move this closer so that they can see. Okay. So the thing about pro progressions and setbacks, you're going to have them. And, you know, for myself, it's like, you know, what am I going to do? What's my goals? What are my goals? My short-term goals, my long-term goals, uh, just to some of the simplest things. And when you have those progressions and you meet those, those short-term goals, yeah, pat yourself on the back, cross that line out, make another goal, and strive for the next goal. You know what I mean? When you have a setback, don't kill yourself. Don't beat yourself up. There is not a timetable or a time limit to have certain things accumulated or accomplished when you get out of prison because you don't know what the hell is going on. You know what I'm saying? You don't have your own. You're not moving on your own. You're not doing all of the stuff on your own. So... There's things that's going to happen 
And when they happen, come on in here, reentry guy. And um, when uh, when things happen and you have those setbacks, just pause. You know what I mean? You know, uh, it's a chair. Come on. Uh huh. Go ahead. We just had somebody else join us. This this pause and you know, calm down. Don't beat yourself up. You know what I mean? Because things is gonna happen. Shit happens. Right. You know what I mean? So when shit happens, guess what? Buckle down, evaluate the situation, assess it, make the proper adjustments, and, and, and address it. The three A system in there. Assess, adjust, and address. But don't beat yourself up. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna go forward, you're gonna, you're gonna progress. You're gonna progress. You know what I mean? And you're gonna have some setbacks. You might not have a lot of setbacks that might not be nothing major, but don't let it bother you mentally. Because if you do, you're going to beat yourself on it. You're going to be stressing. You're going to be worried. You're going to be thinking you let somebody down or disappoint somebody. And no, people out here that really want to see you win, they understand. And they're going to tell you, this, it's cool. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's not the end of the world. You're still here. So don't worry about the, the, the setbacks that you might have. And then it's like I said, like if you got a timeline in your head or you got a calendar of things that you want to accomplish, just know if you're getting them done in a certain amount of time that you plan, it's good. But if you still haven't accomplished those things in time, it's going to give yourself more time because you got to be patient and allow things to happen to where you can meet that goal. You know what I mean? And then when you do, it's done. You cross it off. But don't beat yourself up because you didn't meet it at the timeline that you thought it was going to get accomplished because shit happens in life. And and it makes it, it causes me to say this too, is that... Um, Everybody, whether they've been incarcerated or not, has progressions and setbacks. That's just a part of life. And the system is not necessarily designed for you to make it. It's not. Um, and there's no, let's not be fake about that, right? Um, that prison system, that prison system is uh, fed, that monster is fed by bodies. And they don't give a shit whose no, bodies it is. You see what I'm saying? And it's no, been no, added, added for a very long time. So what happens is, is it, it's in their best interest to get you to come back, okay? So they're not making it easy for you to make it work out here. So what you have to do is you just have to be um, clear about what you're doing. But know even the things that you don't know that you didn't learn because you were incarcerated. The people that know them today, there was a day they didn't know either. My granddaughter has taught me some things about using my phone. And she was, she a baby. She's three. Okay. But she's teaching me. Okay. So just know that there's no harm in asking for help. That's the other thing that's really important. Don't try to suffer in silence and I need to man up and I need to, you know, I need to be able to do this on my own or whatever. No. Um, you need to ask for help. Get the help. People are willing to help you, and that's a good thing. You wanted to say something, sir? Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to speak, and then sometimes you're gonna hear this, and don't let it deter you. You're gonna say that you use in prison as a crutch. You're gonna say that I don't know something, and they're gonna say that that that's a crutch. Quit using as a crutch. Don't do this as a crutch. It's not a crutch. You're really at a disabled stance when you come into society. You're just like a baby being taught how to walk, how to eat, how to understand. And then you have to teach that person how to treat you in the same token that you're learning how to treat yourself. Because with that moment that you, I got out 2020. And I swear that was the most hardest thing in the world was just walking in Walmart and figuring out what kind of deodorant I like. I literally started crying in the aisle because I didn't know what kind of deodorant. And, the, and, and, and my lady friend that was with me, she looked at me and she was like, why you don't know what kind of deodorant? Because all I did was mark off on the paper, sit in the window, and they kicked me out of deodorant. It wasn't about going to the store and seeing 15 different deodorants right. and, and got to choose what kind of toothpaste. What kind of this? These things can drive you into a state of anxiety. of anxiety to the highest level within yourself because nobody's going to understand how a person after 20-some years is disabled to even shopping. 
The woman hand me the money, I dropped it on the counter. Because mm -hmm. in prison, you, you get caught up. with money, you go into the hole. So the keys, the money, the phone, these are things that really I found out within myself that I thought I could handle, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I could handle it. So what I did was I got I developed a cold word with my family, my mother, my father, and my friend. I developed a cold word that when something got overwhelming, I would tell them the cold word and they would stop what they're doing right there and they would walk me outside because that means that it's, it's getting too much. My worldly world is gone. I need to go out. I need to breathe. I need to get my thoughts together and let's regroup. Let's try this again. So don't be afraid to give your family this cold word that's letting them know that it's starting to be overwhelming. Don't be afraid to tell them what you went, like Noreen and, and, and Brother Terrell. Don't be afraid to explain to them. My father, I sat down with him for three hours. And I told him, ask everything and anything that you want to know, and I'm going to be open. My daughters, I got two daughters that, like Terrell, they was hard to pay on me. They thought that I abandoned them like they wasn't nothing, like they was trash. I had to rebuild a bridge that I that 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 got wobbly. And I'm still building on that bridge. My grandson, he loved me because he he's no papa. But my daughters, <laughs> they done been through the trauma of one day they was at daddy house laying in the bed with him and going to the mall and spending money. I want ice cream, they got it. To we go to daddy house and he ain't there. Mm. Mama, I want to go do this. Well, we can't because your daddy in prison. We don't have the money like we used to. So these things, you be careful with your children and allow them and tell them that everything that they feel is valid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't try to it's don't don't try to make excuses. Yeah, In other don't words, excuses. yeah, don't don't try to justify any of it. You see what I'm saying? Just acknowledge it. And I think you said something last week that was important. You just listen. All you could do is just listen what and take mean? in what they're saying and understand that this was their experience. Um, if I look at um I'm I'm a, I'm a, okay, so if you look at the back of this, right? I'm looking you, what you see is a black phone. You see the, the, the hole here. This is what you see. But guess what? This is the same phone, and this is what I see. I'm looking at the other side of it. You see what I'm saying? But it's the self-same phone. It's the same situation, but this is the different perspective. I have a different perspective than you have. You see what I'm saying? But it's the self-same situation. So your perspective based on what you've been through is one thing, but their perspective is something else. And I recognize it's, it's, it's already after seven, and I want to um, give everybody um, that's on here an opportunity to have your last comments, any questions, anything you want to do. I want to give you an opportunity. And then the, the final spotlight that I wanted to highlight tonight is that everything, every circumstance is temporary. Don't be alarmed about the fact that there are setbacks that you make progress and things seems like seem like they're going well and everything's falling in place. And then there's a setback. Well, if you think about that, that's just life. It doesn't matter whether you've been incarcerated or not. Uh, set progressions and setbacks, take a step forward. Something happens, but oftentimes I've heard a statement that I, I hope you'll pay attention to and that it'll help you is that a setback, if you look at it as a setup for the comeback, it's not so devastating. So I hope that you enjoy this session of Free to Heal. And we look forward to seeing you um, every week with us. And uh, enjoy us. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. And I think I'm going to say one more thing. Okay, yes. But go ahead. Go ahead. Wanna, uh -huh. And I want to say one more thing to you guys. Listen, understand this. Everything that you're going through is temporary. Nothing is set in stone out here. It's all temporary. You know what I mean? So therefore... You got to keep going forward. You got to keep going forward. You've been in prison a long time. Guess what? That's temporary now. That's over with. That part is over with. Now, when you get a job, that job might not be your career. That's just a stepping stone. It's going to be temporary. You know what I mean? So the things you're going to go through, don't think it's just setting steam in. It's temporary. And just look at it in that aspect. 
and keep moving forward. And that's really important. That's 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 a lesson for everybody: being flexible, not being so tied and so rigid in what you think, the way you think everything's supposed to go. And I don't care who you are. The more rigid you are, the more pain and stuff you you cause yourself because everything is not going to go our way. Okay, and prison a lot of times makes causes people to become very self centered, yeah. and it becomes necessary for survival at some level. But at the same time, when you bring that home, it becomes problematic because the world don't care mm -hmm. about what you've been through. They really don't. Like Terrell said, you know, your family may care, but at the end of the day, society at large doesn't care. And it's one thing that I had wrote this word down, and it's expectations. And I tell you guys all the time, everybody's going to have expectations for you and about you and what you do. The ones you got to pay attention to are your own. Okay? And when Terrell mentions, if you find that you have this time frame in your head of how things are supposed to go and it doesn't go according to that, that may not be a forget it and it likely isn't going to do that. But what you do is you recognize that's just the way life is and you keep moving. And depending on how important that goal is to you, then you determine what you want to do from there. So I want to I want to come first because I need to holler at my boy Rufus and find out, hey, how we do, Rufus? You know what I'm saying? What, what we do? Where we at? Where we at on a scale? You know what I'm saying? How close are we? How close do we come? Uh, well, you, it, it's close. But it, it's close. You know, OK. It's OK. Close. I can you, take you, that. You, 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 had a, you hit a, you, you hit the 90 mark. Okay, okay, Bobby. I'm gonna that all day long. Any, any last comments? Anything you gonna take away from tonight? Um, I just like to say that you know I'm really enjoying this group, and 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 I like I like that every you know what everyone said. You know what I mean? And it's it, you know it, this, this group to me seems life changing. You know what I mean? And it's just it's just reminding me to really stay focused and. And, and and stay on my path, you know what I mean. And, and being reminded about, you know, the, the the importance of when I do come home and be patient with with my family and 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 you know allow them to allow them to like you know um uh what's the word I'm looking for? Well, just I just say just be patient with my family, you know. Wonderful, thank you, yeah. and I'm glad you're here. Thank All you. Right. And we, we, I'm glad we at least got a 90. You know what I'm saying? We may not have yeah. hit it 100%, but you know what I'm saying? I'll take right. that. I'll take All that. Right. Okay? That's what's up. That's what's All up. All right. Okay. Uh, Doreen, I don't want to forget this, but we have to share and communicate with ourselves just as much as we have to share and communicate with others. Yeah. Ask for help. Sometimes you have to look at yourself and go, hey, self, I need some help internally you know you have to know yourself to be able to share with others but you have to share with yourself sometimes i just go over what i did for the day or the week and say oh i did this oh i did that and it's not that you're acting crazy talking to yourself you're just verbalizing so you realize that you really did it and you shared and you you communicated with yourself and others and that's awesome and that's great that's good information to share with people and i appreciate that thank you uh, mr diaz uh, i uh well first of all i just want to uh uh let them know thank you for the book i appreciate it you know uh i was gonna send them a text earlier but i started uh i got caught up doing something now just just to thank them you know that uh, it was it was nice of him to come over here and drop it off uh other than that, I'm doing good. Uh, it was a good group, you know. And uh, I, I, I think, I think we hit it though. You know? <laughs> all right, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, that's all right with me. Thank you. Appreciate right. that. <laughs> You're welcome, brother. You're welcome. And um, you know, Rufus, can you have Sarkis? Because I know he is he is he able to um unmute and speak, or can he do it on your phone? You won't talk to him. There you go. Okay. Just give a little feedback so but having a view to step away from you a little bit. Okay, how about how'd you enjoy the group, Sarkis? Pardon me? What did you say? I couldn't hear you. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna work on we're gonna work on your on your technology for the next week, okay? 
But thanks for listening. Okay. I appreciate it right, very much. Mr. Taylor. Well, thank you. Can you unmute Mr. Taylor? Okay. Okay, Mr. Hall. Go ahead, take the mic. Any Hello? last thoughts? Who you want to talk to? Taylor, talk to you right now. Michael? Uh, oh, yeah. For me, uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed the group. Uh, good to see uh, the Tillman come through last week. Uh, take a picture with us and uh, showing us uh, what, uh, what, what people were mean. Because he gave us his word. He was going to come through. He was going to pop up and give us a book. So that was that was very good. You know? And uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, tonight. Although we got a lot of people in our living room tonight, so it's a little distracting. Yeah. But, uh, I was able to uh, get uh, a lot of good information out of the meeting. And uh, I started reading the book. And right now I'm on the uh, the first chapter, which is uh, confidence. And I'm, that's that's empowering. And, and I agree with Tillman on that. I, I believe that is one of the most important things at the hand of anybody is confidence because you're going to get a lot of rejections. So you have to be able to continue to keep going forward, one that you want to succeed in whatever path you take on. Uh, it, it's, uh, I enjoyed the meeting. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and um, Mr. Uh, Enriquez, unmute for us. There you go. So, um, so how did you enjoy the how did you enjoy the group? I thoroughly enjoyed the group. I did enjoy the group, and I appreciate the wisdom, and it all rings true. Very true. Um, about being patient with myself, being patient with um, my family, my family being patient with me. Um, but I, I, I will be joining this group later. And next week also, I like this group a lot. This seems like the, this this is one of the groups that's the most um, relative relative to me right now at this point. Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm picking up game, uh, and that's like you right. said, those things that's right. those things with my family and that's, adjusting that's with my family. Not a game. That's what right. we're trying to spit right. for you. Right, I appreciate it. I don't want this. I need I want Mr. I, I can't mute Mr. Sarkis, I, but but his phone is kicking up a lot of noise, and yeah. for some reason it won't even let me mute him. Ooh. I don't know how I can't do it. Uh, Mr. Stephens, yeah, yeah. I like the way that everyone repetition today about life experience you know on Saturdays I go to a religious counseling and he gave me a book and it wasn't a diary it was a book that's called the book of remembrance it's to write down and chart down everything that the, the Lord have allowed you to have mm. and that is to petition him and that is to request of him being so grateful for the things that he had put forward in your life today. And uh, I'm so grateful that you all talked about the different subject matters about coming out, being in, and about uh, uh, looking towards yourself about things that you can correct. Wonderful. Well, it's always a joy to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Mr. Terry? Hi, Noreen. How are you doing? All right. Anything you're going to take away from tonight? Well, I kind of got everything. You guys rarely rock the boat. Uh, <laughs> I want to say to the book, and uh, I, I, I believe in when you come out of prison, I did have no problem asking. I asked questions like you wouldn't believe. That was my number one suggestion. Is anyone coming out of prison? Ask questions. Go to your counselor. Go to your AA group. Ask people around your house, who are you coming from? Where is you going? When are you going to get your social security card? 
all these questions. Yeah, don't be afraid. What you were afraid to go to prison, you're not afraid to come home. And be glad that you're free and happy and joyful. And and uh, do everything you can to help one another. That's wonderful. Thank you. And I'm always my, glad to have my, you. It froze up on me. Uh-oh, that's okay. I can hear you, though. But thank you for being with us. Hey, Kit. You want to talk to me? Oh, can you hear me? I sure okay. can. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank the, one of my young homies, because he is a young homie uh, from South Central, uh, for the Swarming Up for Success book. And I thank him for letting me take all the pictures and stuff with him. Hey, it's good to see a little homie make it. <laughs> okay. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, well, glad you could join us this evening too, kid, as always, babe. All right. Let me see, Mr. That's Taylor, Richard Taylor. I, I I see you there, but can you unmute? Good night, Noreen. Good night, Otis. Okay. I want to give the folks in the room, sir, in the back, any last comments? Hello. Oh, wait. Oh, Mr. Taylor. Hello. Wait, we got Mr. Yeah. Taylor. Go ahead. Hello. Sorry. I was, I was, I was, um, uh, I was by the stove making chicken. Anyhow, uh, thank you for the group. And I, I so relate to that guy that uh, couldn't decide which deodorant to buy. <laughs> that was funny because, <laughs> because when I first got out, I didn't even know how to use a cell phone. You right. Know? <laughs> um, so it, 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 it's challenging. But it is. You just have to, uh, take and most time. people wouldn't even, they wouldn't even think anything of it. They would think that it's strange that you couldn't make a simple decision like that. But sometimes because everybody, everything had been laid out, you didn't have a whole bunch of choices on what kind of deodorant to have. You didn't realize that it could be overwhelming and now that you have all these choices. Yeah. yeah. No. So, so thank you for being with us, and I hope that you got something out of it. Okay. I certainly did, and I I appreciate your group very much. The first time, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, okay. sir, back here. You were going to say. Y'all just take your time and enjoy your freedom. Give yourself a breath of fresh air, and understand that what was in prison, leaving prison, you got a new life. You got a new uh, 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 a new vision on life, and let that be your success. Don't be in the mirror, the rearview mirror. Look out the front window so you can see your journey. Wonderful. Ma'am? I would just tell you that patience is a virtue, and uh, just continue to practice it. Absolutely. <laughs> Missy? So this is the really important part is that you're learning now what us who have been out for a while know. You don't know nothing when you come out of prison, especially when you've been long. So listen to the people. They're telling you right. Don't act like you know stuff because you don't know it. And that's not to down you. It's just you don't know what's going on in this world. We knew everything in prison. We knew how the prison ran, who ran it. We ran it. We did our thing and stuff. And then we come home and we don't run nothing out here. Okay. Can they see you? Yeah. Um, so I've been home um, nine years and I'm still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you. Wonderful. Night. And sir. I just want to say uh, congratulations, man. Y'all home. Stay focused. Don't let, don't let anybody uh, <clears throat> depper your light, man, because uh, this is where it's at. This is the real yard. This is the, this is the yard that matter. You know what I mean? And stay focused, man. Don't let nobody damper your spirits, man. Keep your spirit up and lively and vibrant and positive. And fuck who don't like it. Straight up. This is about you. This is your life. Do you. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Because if the person want to see you win, you're going to feel it. Yeah. And if they don't want to see you win, get the hell away from them. That's because okay. they want to see you go down. You know what I mean? And they're going to be jealous of, of what you're trying to accomplish and what you're doing. So just stay focused, man, and have patience. Give yourself time. Don't rush nothing. You didn't rush a day in jail. Don't rush a day on the street. Sir, um, we are blessed to have you to join us. I know it was kind of late. You want to give them your name and just any comments or what you what you were able to hear? And let them know how much you did. Too and yeah, time. okay. My name is DJ. My name is Devon. They call me DJ. 
I did 11 straight. I've been out eight years. Uh-huh. And all I can tell you is, man, hey, take it one day at a time out here like you took one day at a time in there. Enjoy your freedom, you know what I'm saying, and walk your walk. You can't walk nobody else's walk. Walk your walk. That's what I've been doing, walking my walk. Quit my job, start working for myself. Wonderful. I'm a handyman, a bar and a mechanic. And this is my best friend right here, the book writer. He called me whenever he got a problem, he know who to call. Car problem, he going to call me. Ain't no doubt. Eric certified. Certified. Me. Yeah. Enjoy and your life. That's what I'm doing. And this, this is absolutely awesome because I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here tonight. This is Free to Heal. You can check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, all you know, all social media. Um, please check out our other videos um, and also leave us comments if there are topics that you want us to discuss. Please let us know that. But we just this is Free to Heal where we're trying to heal our own wounds first before we start worrying about other people. So this we're glad to have you guys and we'll see you guys next week all right all right everybody see y'all next week welcome home to everybody talk to y'all later bye-bye